Hi there, my little butterflies. Welcome back to our series, The Broken Mirror. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since the last chapter because we've all been incredibly busy, so it's hard to schedule meetings together. But we've finally done it. This chapter is written by Lazy and January. And for this chapter, I'll be voicing the narrator and Adrian slash Chat Noir slash Chat Blanc. I'm Lazy and I'll be voicing Marinette slash Ladybug and Lila. And I'm kind of sick right now, so... um. <laughs> Hi, I'm January, and I'll be voicing Alia and Nino. Now, ever since the last chapter came out, we realized we haven't done this very important thing. Announce a season two of The Broken Mirror! We've known we were going to do a season two for a couple months now. We just haven't announced it. Now, the second season is going to be a lot shorter, and it is just going to basically sum everything up, which will make more sense when chapter 26 comes out. But just know that we have big plans for it. Also, I'd like to sincerely apologize for keeping y'all waiting. I got taken by the cult known as Theater and they trapped me for a little bit, but I'm back now and I'm alive and not dead. Also, we wanted to thank you for 437 subscribers on YouTube and 600 followers on Spotify. That is utterly insane. Now, chapter 25. Nightmare Bolt, the finale, part two. Meet me in the bathroom right after school. That's what the note said this time. Marinette shoved it deep into her backpack. What did Lila want this time? It was the final class of the day and the sub was boring her to death. Marinette watched as the blonde-headed boy in front of her wrote intently onto a piece of notebook paper. She was reminded of her own blonde-headed boy and eventually the slight blueness creeping into his eyes. After Marinette had noted Chat Noir's changing eyes, she took him to her house, but he didn't stay long. He thought it might be better to go home rather than stay at her place. It hurt a little, but it made sense. Now, she was thinking about Lila, the brunette-haired manipulator who also happened to be the mastermind behind the notes. She still had so many questions to ask her, and maybe that's why Lila planned for them to meet later. She watched the clock as it ticked by the final few minutes of the hour. The sub was still droning on about his college life because Ivan had asked him about it to get them out of doing work when the bell rang. Alia and I are going to the movie theaters. Do you guys want to come? Nino asked Marinette and Adrian as he got up and picked up his backpack. Marinette hesitated. No, sorry, I have plans. Same, is all Adrian said before fleeing the room. All right, see you tomorrow, Mari. Alia waved goodbye as she left and Nino left the room. The sub followed them outside, not caring that Marinette was still in there. Marinette was shouldering her backpack when a voice from behind her spoke. Wow, you are really bad at lying. It was Lila. Marinette rolled her eyes. Like you could do better. Lila walked down a few steps and laughed. Except I have. You never suspected me, did you? The thought passed. Marinette muttered, walking down to the bottom of the stairs. Sure. Lila? Marinette started. Where did you learn to fight like that? Lila stared directly into Marinette's eyes. As a child, I was injected with the superhuman serum, and I was forced to fight. Marinette's eyes widened. Really? Lila smirked. Joking. She walked past Marinette and out the door. Marinette stood there for a moment before realizing that Lila was beckoning her out of the door. You coming? She asked. Marinette nodded and followed a few feet behind Lila to avoid suspicion to the girls' bathroom. Lila pushed open each stall to make sure no one was in there and locked the door behind them. So, what are we doing here? Marinette asked. Lila squatted down to get a better view of the lock on the supply closet. Waiting. She replied simply, pulling out a bobby pin from her hair and inserting it into the lock. Marinette took this as a knot to disturb her, so she hoisted herself onto one of the dry sinks and sat tentatively. This version of Lila was completely different from the Lila who blamed her for pushing her down the stairs and got her suspended. This Lila was different and surprisingly helpful. The window on the wall was pushed open and Marinette turned her head. Shatnaware was sitting on the windowsill. Hey, Marinette. Uh, hi? She stuttered, tilting her head. Lila called me here. He gave a smile and jumped to the floor. He walked in front of Marinette and carefully grazed his lips against hers. How's my princess? She wrapped her arms around his neck. Your eyes, they're bluer. Don't mind that, it's probably just the miraculous acting up from over usage or something, he suggested. Okay. She bit her bottom lip. She didn't for one moment believe it. You love her to down there? We have actual things to do. Lila had successfully picked the lock on the door and the light was already on. Shatnawar helped Marinette down from the sink and slipped his hand in hers as they took the short walk to the supply closet. It smelled of citrus scented cleaning supplies and space was limited. Why are we here? 
Isn't this space a little too tight? Chat Noir asked. Can you both just calm down? Lila said, annoyance creeping into her voice. Lila searched around the walls, feeling each divot in the paint. Here, she whispered, pushing on a bump on the wall. The floor began shaking. Marinette pushed herself against Chat Noir instinctively. The ceiling was getting taller by the second. Wait, no. They were being lowered. As the trio descended into the unknown, Marinette felt a mix of excitement and apprehension. She wondered what Lila had discovered and why she had brought them to this hidden space. The room they entered was surprisingly spacious, illuminated by blindingly bright lights hanging from the ceiling. Marinette looked around, taking in the side of the room. It was filled with shelves containing various items, books, scrolls, and peculiar artifacts. There was also large tables cluttered with paper, maps, and computers. It seemed like a secret hideout of some sort. This is under our school? Marinette asked in awe. Lila nodded. How did you find this? Chat Noir asked, picking up a device that looked like a robot. It's been here. I just tumbled upon it. She waved her hand over the area and smiled. So what are we here for? Marinette questioned. Marinette, we both know what's happening to Chat Noir. Lila said, pointing to Chat Noir. Marinette stared at the floor. She did. She just didn't want it to be true. What's happening to me? Chat Noir asked, suddenly conscious of the changes in his appearance. Are you going to tell him? Or am I? Lila finished. Marinette gulped. She didn't dare make eye contact with either of them. Lila sighed deeply. <sighs> Damn you, Marinette. You're going to make me say it, aren't you? Marinette lifted her head and Chat Noir stared directly into her. His eyes were almost half blue. Chat Noir? Lila started, his name sounding different on her tongue. Has Marinette ever told you about Chat Blanc? His eyes glossed over Lila, then to Marinette, whose eyes were watering and pained. He turned his attention to Lila again. No. Why? Who is this? He glanced between the two of them. Guy? It's... Lila started, gesturing for Marinette to finish her thought. You... Akumatize. Marinette finished, staring intently at the ground. Chat Noir's eyebrows furrowed and he backed away in both shock and confusion. No, th that's not true. I've never been akumatized. Yes, you have. No, I've never been akumatized. Chat Noir screamed. Lila ignored this and continued. Marinette has been having nightmares about Chat Blanc. He winced at the name. He was having a hard time accepting it used to be his. Dreams, and in a future that isn't ours. That isn't ours? What do you mean? Chat Noir asked her, the anger still making an appearance in his voice. Marinette opened her mouth. Uh, almost a year ago, Bunnix came from the future and told me she needed me to deacumatize you. Because you destroyed everything. You knew my identity, and you wanted my miraculous. Chat Noir stood silently, and Marinette's eyes welled up. He grabbed Marinette's shoulders. Did I hurt you? Why didn't you tell me about this? I could have helped you. I could have... He... He killed the future me. You... Killed me. So... I thought... Tears streamed down her face and her breath hitched. I thought if I didn't tell you, it would never happen. And you would never become him. She wiped her tears and stared up at him. He scared me. And the fact that you're turning into him scares me more. She sniffled. I can't lose you again. He stood there, thinking about what she said, and reacted by hugging her, embracing her in his arms. She cried on his shoulder and held on tighter. They stood in each other's arms for a moment before Marinette could catch her breath. He pressed a kiss to her forehead, wiping her tears, expressing his understanding and sincerity without spoken words. Finished. Lila broke the mood while Chat Noir nodded. Good. We have things to do. She dug through her pockets for a moment, pulling out the same USB stick she showed them the day before. Lila beckoned for them to follow her, and she led them to the furthest end of the wall with a huge monitor with a console in front of it. Lila inserted the USB into one of the many open ports. The screen flickered to life. This is everything I have about Nightmare Vault. She paused, navigating through the files. Of course, I couldn't get everything. Chat Noir was still holding onto Marinette. Why not? Lila sighed deeply to calm herself down. 
Getting this information was not easy. I like to see you try to steal important information without being noticed. Can we get to the point? Marinette butted in. Lila glanced at both of them before lingering on Marinette. Yes. Yes, we can. She turned back to the screen. Nightmare Vault only exists in the mirror realm along with the specially curated nightmares. Does everyone see a nightmare? Shot Noir asked, realizing he didn't have one of his own. Lila shook her head. I don't think so, but I think it's because you're turning into someone else's nightmare. She glanced at Marinette. How long does he have? Marinette asked, staring back at Shat Noir's changing eyes. Maybe a couple hours at most. Lila concluded. I think Nightmare Vault and his nightmares are attempting to escape. That's why he's changing. Marinette, your nightmare is attached to Shat Noir, so his body is being hijacked. Marinette's eyebrows raised upward. Is there anything we can do to stop it? Lila still shook her head. Nothing I know of. But what about the object of Omegization? Can't we destroy that? Marinette suggested, her voice shaking. I don't know where that is. Lila admitted. Marinette's eyes watered. You said you knew who Hawkmoth was. Who is it? I can't tell you. Lila said, her eyes flicking across Chat Noir. You have to! Chat's turning into someone else and you have the information to stop it. Who is he? Marinette yelled, a tear rolling down her face. I'm sorry. I lied. Lila paused. I don't know who he is. Why did this have to happen now? Things were finally going right, and then this. Marinette took a deep breath, trying to steady herself. She couldn't let this consume her. She had faced countless challenges she couldn't give up now. They were just back to square one, oblivious to Hawkmoth's identity. Oh my god. Marinette gulped. What? Marinette. The fear you had when you were in that realm was enough to disrupt the barrier between that realm and this one. They're coming. Shatnamore tightened his grip on Marinette's hand. We can't let him escape. He's a danger to everyone. Lila nodded. We should move. This place isn't going to help us much. Lila led the way back to the elevator hidden in the supply closet. Marinette took one more glance at Shatnamore's eyes. They were almost fully blue. She pulled him into a hug. I'm sorry. She whispered. The elevator continued its journey upwards. It's okay. There's nothing you could have done differently. I still love you, no matter what. Shadowmar whispered into her hair as the room shrunk into its original size. The room rattled halfway up and Merit found Shadowmar tightened. The elevator stopped. That wasn't supposed to happen. Lila fiddled with the hidden buttons on the wall. What happened? Marinette asked, hoping it was just a malfunction. Lila pulled open the control section. I... I don't know. Marinette turned back to Chat Noir. He didn't have much time. There was only a bit of green left. Sha, you have to fight it. I don't know how to. I, I don't feel any different. Chat Noir trembled. Marinette pulled him into another hug. She wanted so badly for this not to happen. He couldn't become him. Lila took a small break from trying to fix the elevator. Marinette, you should transform soon. Just in case. She added. Marinette stepped away from Chat Noir. Right. She uttered the words to transform herself and gave a small smile to Chat Noir. Ah, there we go. Lila pushed a button and the elevator resumed rising. When it stopped, Lila opened the door and peeked out. Coast is clear. You guys should go first. I need to make sure this is hidden first. Ladybug led Chat Noir out into the girl's bathroom. I guess you wait for her? Chat Noir asked, offering a comforting smile to Ladybug. She returned it, even though she was terrified of what could happen to him. Shanwar glanced at himself in the mirror. Whoa. Look. Ladybug turned her head to look at him in the mirror. His eyes were his normal green, but with blue at the top. The opposite of what he looked like now. Ladybug wrapped her arms around his neck and pressed her lips against his. Her eyes were closed. She savored it. Shanwar stared in her arms. Lady. He muttered. A different sound in his voice. She pulled away, the final specks of green wiping away. Sha. She breathed cautiously. You're turning. Sha stared down at his suit, which is suddenly changing from his normal black to white. Save me? He asked, giving her a lopsided smile. Ladybug's eyes watered and she nodded. Always. She choked out. The white invaded his suit like a parasite, each second looking more and more like Sha Blanc. Ladybug called out to Lila with no response. She called again. Nothing. 
Ladybug walked past her changing lever towards the supply closet, but a hand grabbed hers. She turned around. Sha! Why the rush? Marinette. Chaplon glared at her. The grip on her hand loosened as his eyes flickered to green for a brief moment. Run! He coughed, and Ladybug reached for her yo-yo, running into the supply closet. Lila! She yelled, searching the small area. It was empty. Ladybug cursed under her breath. Ladybug grappled onto a pole on top of the building through the window, leaving Chaplon behind. Lila knew more about Nightmare Wolf than any of them. She needed her to help her defeat Nightmare Wolf and save Chat Noir. He was still in there and she could save him. She had to. Ladybug landed on a vacant rooftop to regroup herself. Where would Lila be? Think, Ladybug, think! She uttered it under her breath. She didn't know much about Lila like Lila knew about her. How was she supposed to find her? The sewer. Lila took have been there once. Maybe she would be there now. It was worth a shot. Ladybug searched the streets to an entrance and soon found one, using her yo-yo to open it from the rooftops and falling into it. She closed the hatch above her and waited for a moment for her eyes to adjust to the newfound darkness. She checked her surroundings before wandering around, searching for anything familiar. She turned a corner, a familiar pathway ahead of her. It was part of the way Lelo took them. She ran a couple more corners, each new space becoming more promising, until finally the dim lit space welcomed her into a cardboard glory. But there were no signs of Lila anywhere. It was only then that a thought crossed her mind. The miracle box. Oh yeah. She remembered. She whipped out her yo-yo and dialed Alia's number. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Ladybug urged as if Alia could hear her. The line went through. Marinette. Ladybug verbally sighed with relief. <sighs> Thank God you're safe. Do you have the miracle box with you? Yeah. Why? What's going on? Alia asked worriedly. Hawkmoth created a villain. He's got Channel War under his control. Ladybug explained, her voice quavering. Alia, I need you to bring the miracle box and meet me. I- I'll text you my location. Yeah, 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 I can, I can do that. Alia responded. Okay, thank you, Alia. Really, I don't know what I'd do without you. Ladybug said before the line disconnected. Ladybug typed her location, but before she could hit send, she heard footsteps echo throughout the sewer system. She wasn't alone anymore. Ladybug cautiously slid out of the small room and carefully stepped closer to the corner. She ran in the corner to see a familiar face. Even more so a familiar voice that she only heard moments ago. Uh, are you? Ladybug started, complete confusion with her voice. Uh, how did you find me? Ollie looked down and spoke quietly. She could barely hear her over the Russian water. Marinette, I always know you. So, hi there. Let me start off by apologizing for literally taking over two months to finally come out with this chapter. These, like, past few months have been, like, incredibly busy for all of us. So now that we were on break for Christmas and New Year's, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's, by the way, we've just been relaxing and sleeping and watching so many movies. And Flynn kind of went on a family vacation, so he kind of couldn't really do anything, but it's out now. So, um... Don't hate us too much, but we do updates on our YouTube channel community section, so if this happens again, check there for updates. And yes, we are actually doing a season 2 of The Broken Mirror. Ooh. But before we get to season 2, let's finish season 1. So thank you so much for sticking around and waiting for us. We sincerely appreciate everything, all your wonderful comments, and it's just so... Thank you. Okay. We'll see you guys in a bit. We don't know how long this, the next chapter is going to take. So, um, stick with us.